Right, I'm Benny. I'm Gabe. And we're back again at VTR Guitars. Uh, this time we're not demoing a guitar that we've worked on. We're demoing one of my own, uh, which is the Epiphone Zatwild ZV. Um, I'm a bit sad. Uh, I give names to all my guitars, and this one's called Berserker. Uh, a little sticker on the side of the headstock. Um, <laughs> It's just your typical Epiphone uh, Zap Wild model uh, with the bullseye. The bolt on neck. Uh, no, set neck. No, set neck. Yeah. Yeah, well, alright. <laughs> right. um, I apologise for that. I <laughs> hope you will as well. Um, it's got mahogany body, uh, obviously, SGV, uh, maple neck, rosewood board. Mother of Pearl block inlays, well they'll be acrylic ones with it being an Epiphone. Um, the Zat Wild EMG set which is the 81 and 85. Um, the only thing I really need to do to this is change the pots. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're for the um, calf tops. <laughs> so I need to get the shorts pots. Uh, Grover machine heads, bone nut. Um, and the Zack Wild silhouette on the back. Yeah, the little Gumby Zack, <laughs> as Zack himself puts it. <laughs> um, so we're going to run down through some tones for you. Uh, as usual, going through the Marshall MG15 FX CF. Huh? Can't speak this morning. <laughs> it's too early, I'm not having coffee yet. <laughs> uh, so we're going to run through like the clean, crunch, overdrive. Uh, oh. Might be both overdrives if we're feeling fruity enough. <laughs> we were going to demo some pedals, but uh, my paddle boards decided to be a bit daft. <laughs> and the power's not working yeah, properly. Yeah, power supply's being a bit stupid, but um, I've basically got Zach's paddle board, because not only being a big Zach Wild fan, um, his stuff just works for how I play, uh, which is not very well. <laughs> it just makes the sound a little bit better. <laughs> Same with Zach. <laughs> nah, he's um, alright. He's a good egg. We all love Zach Wild here at VTR Guitars. But um yeah, so Gerb's gonna run down some stuff <coughs> as usual. Um we'll start off on the clean channel. Uh with all the channels, it's all my preset channels uh sounds. Um so if you don't like the tones, tough. I do. <laughs> um so here we go. Um, this is a clean channel. Yeah, and well, I'm gonna start off from the neck because it sounds nicer. <laughs> Not so in drop D. I was going to ask him about that after this one. <laughs> and also, Gerb saying that he's in drop D, the string gauge on it as well is 10 to 60. Um, so heavy, I guess. Heavy, heavy, because I normally have, what do I normally have it tuned to? It says on the back. <laughs> C. <laughs> C or A. Um, but. Yeah, so uh, that's a clean sound. Um, in the 85, uh, switch down to the 81. A lot brighter. A lot brighter. was a clean tone uh, in the neck and the bridge should we try it in the middle yeah why not Let's see if it behaves it does it's a lot more bassy <laughs>
hear the like bridge pickup work on the higher strings. Yeah, and you can hear the uh, bottom end from the neck pickup on yeah. the lower strings. Um, the thing I like about EMGs, active pickups aren't for everybody. Um, uh, I'm not really a big fan of active. No. I, I like both, don't I? I like passive mm. and active. Mm. Um, I've only got two guitars with active, which is that on my Westfield uh, single cut. Just don't want to get in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, all the controls on the guitar, by the way, are dimed. Um, so that was the clean tones. Let's shift over to the crunch channel. I might have to turn the volume down somewhere down the line. Uh, which pickle are you going to start on? Start on the bridge. Mm -hmm. There we go. Right, so we're on the crunch channel now. <laughs> to pinch as well as that but it's all in the fingers and, uh, <laughs> and how you peck attack um so he just goes through you can have basically what the artist plays and not be like the artist which is what a lot of people are oh, what a buy so and so signature whatever so it can sound like that he can get close but you're never going to sound like that artist though no it's all in the hands i mean i don't sound nowhere near is that loud and i've basically got a lot of stuff. <laughs> he got like eighty percent of his gear. <laughs> <laughs> the lower end. Um, the only stuff of his gear that I've got that the higher end that he actually uses is MXR stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> I, I even went out mainly because it was cheaper than the standard rotor bag. Uh, I got the Zatlar limited edition one with the Vertigo tread plate, and plus the Vertigo tread plate's cool. And you got Zatlar as well. Yeah, it's that wild, wild overdrive. The old one, not the Berserker overdrive. Uh, wild phase and the black label chorus. Um, I just need to upgrade my delay pedal because it's a bell cap one. Oh, it's all right, does a job on a lot of carbon copy. Uh, should we go OD1 or OD2 or both? Yeah, we'll go OD1. OD1. As you can tell, we, we just like to do it as. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, right, in, we're, in, we're in OD1 now. Did you do the other pick up on the crumbs track? No, I didn't. You are doing the other pick ups on the crumbs now. We'll come back to it. <laughs> <laughs> probably heard me saying to Gerb, um, we didn't do the other pickups on the Crunch channel, um, so we might come back to that after, um, or not. 
Um, but that was the bridge picked up, which is the 81 on the Overdrive 1 channel. So if we go to the Overdrive 2 channel and do all the pick up positions. Yeah. <laughs> well, you get what you get with us. <laughs> A bit more gain. Yeah. just the beast <laughs> <laughs> right so again that was the 85 uh, if we flick it over to the middle let's see what both pickups sound like on the OD1 oh OD2 sorry The only active pickups I've ever tried and owned. Uh, I just love the punch and the clarity you get, even on the higher gain settings. I mean, you can still get a lot more gain out of this channel. Um, I can't remember what it's set to, but it's, it's only low. I think it's set to about four. Uh, let's go say there's no point looking at the control panel, go because it's <laughs> yeah, not it's to any of that. Yeah. <laughs> all your presets. Yeah, because I'm lazy. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that was the 81 and 85 together. Um, really nice clarity on the high strings and the lower strings. Uh, it's still cut through, still pump. Plenty of punch in the pickle. So we're now on the 85 on its own.
nice, very, very nice. Um, should we have a play about see how much gain we can get out of this, John? Yeah, go for it. quite nicely when I'm playing I pretty much sit on this channel uh, and I'll push the uh, for my main rhythm sound and it clean up will back the volume off I do that do it with all my guitars really passive or active and um, quite an old school thing to do yeah because back in tut day <laughs> in tut day they didn't really have any like boost pedals or anything uh, like that so yeah and they didn't have it was rare they had multi-channel amps as yeah. well um so when I want to get a lead sound I'll just push it with an overdrive paddle. Um so if I want a different type of uh rhythm sound I'll back the volume off of my guitar and push it with the overdrive. Because the good thing about the uh MXR overdrives it don't tend to colour your sound either. Um it tends to keep it straight to how you set it without affecting it too much, it just boosts it. Which is what I like. It's why I prefer an overdrive paddle to a say a distortion paddle. Um I think you can do a lot more with an overdrive. But I think uh, I think that'll conclude it for the uh Epiphone Z V. Um which they don't make anymore. Um, if you want something similar, Dean Split Tail, uh, if you can't get hold of one, I'm a Dean Split Tail, which is basically is that same shape, because uh, it was Dean who made it originally for Zach. Uh, Zach drew it on a napkin, as a lot of people do. Uh, dime bags drawings are just rough sketches. Um, so Dean made it him, and then uh, he commissioned Epiphone and Gibson to make it as well. And obviously now he's got his own company, Wild Audio, um, he's tweaked the shape a bit more, and um, it's, it's the Warhammer and, and, and the graphics as well. He's he, uh, tweaked as well. Yeah, he's. It's, I think he, he does uh, like a flame maple top one, and he does a Vertigo. Yeah, yeah, it's it is the Vertigo. Is it, which is, is, is it the V? 
That. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the V does it pen stripe. That's the one, yeah. And um, the Odin's, he does with the bullseye. And um, the which, which, Barbarian, which is his take on a SG, um, has got the Bussle, which is that one. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that concludes it for the Epiphone. Uh, another demo we've got coming up soon. Um, not sure when it'll be, but it's for another one of mine, which is. If you can see it, Black Tooth Grim, which is my Dean Razorback that's made in Indonesia, if I remember rightly. It's one of the lower price ones, but it's. I can't remember what the pickup is in the neck. I think it might be a DMT. I think it is a Dean pickup, but it's got a Seymour Duncan Dime Booker, which I absolutely love. Uh, license Floyd, so that one will be coming soon. Um, because we all know and love Saint Dime. Saint Dime. Um, I've got a tattoo of him on my leg next to Lenny. <laughs> and eventually, once Dime's finished, Dio and Randy Rose will be going on the leg as well. Um, so that's concluded for that. Also, hopefully, as you've noticed, I'm rocking a VTR guitar shirt. So hopefully we'll be getting some of them made soon and they will be up for sale. Um, not sure what price they'll be yet, but they won't be too expensive. Probably looking 10, 15 pound mark. Um, and whatever that equates to around the world. Um, obviously VTR on the front. And the logo on the back. Uh, need to get the one ordered for Gerb. <laughs> But I've got all fancy wearing a shirt. Yeah, we're <laughs> um, going to invest in some work shirts for me and Gerb as well, so we're going to look all posh and professional. <laughs> and if you've got a cut, we we'll get some patches done. Yeah, um, we're going to have a look at getting patches done um, at some point. I want one of that one for on the back of my cut because <laughs> it's got to be done. But anyway, um, yeah. So again, thanks to Gerb as usual. For providing riffage. Um, I've been Vinny. I've been Gabe. Yeah, I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> and as usual, all the information will be down there where you all know and love and expect it to be. Yeah. Um, so we're going to sign off on this one and we'll catch you later. In a bit.